Do you know who's going to hack your private information, files, photos, and messages on the internet? I know. So if you do not know, stay on this video. I will tell you in a minute. Hello, my name is Gustavo Troncoso. I'm CEO of Unido International Foundation. We're going to talk about the internet, and I'm going to make it clear. There's two types of internet. The regular internet, which you go into, and you have fun, entertain yourself, or work. And then there's the dark internet. We don't want to talk about the dark internet. You need a code or an algorithm to get into the dark internet. And that's not something that we want to talk about. Now, the reason I want to make a difference between the open and free internet and any other internet around there is that everything I'm going to talk about is about the free internet. The internet that you and me, common citizens, use every day. I must continue saying that I think the internet is immensely safe. I must continue saying that I'm totally against teaching with fear, marketing with fear. There is no fear. There's no need for fear. The internet is safe. Most of the users are safe. And it doesn't matter how many people get hacked every day and all those statistics you're going to hear. All it matters is that it's still very low, fortunately, and you're not at high risk. So believe it or not, you're still pretty safe on the internet. So I just want to make that clear. You're still really pretty safe on the internet. Now, do we want to make it safer? Yes, we do. Do we want to become absolutely private? Yes, we do. Why? Again, I want to say it again. Because of a concern? No. Because we deserve our privacy. We have a right to our privacy. And we definitely want our privacy. Let's talk about the real threats on the Internet. Who are they? There's three kinds of threats. The people who live off the Internet. So they wake up every day and hack somebody to go pay their bills. The next ones are the people who are upcoming and they want to hack into companies. They want to get databases of information. And the kid who's out there on the Internet, very intelligent, high IQ person who just want to hack somebody for fun. Then he might turn into a real big hacker. But at the beginning, it's just your kid. It might be your neighbor. It might be your cousin. I don't know. I have no idea. But a vast majority of the people who are breaking your privacy on the Internet, believe me, are between the age of 16 and 21. Now, did somebody woke up today and say, you know, I'm going to hack John or I'm going to hack Mary, who lived down the street, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can hack him today and make a penny? No, it is not, doesn't work that way. It basically, it takes a long time for somebody to go hack you, and it's got to be something very, very worthy to him for him to spend all that time before he hacks you. So let's agree that most of the people on the Internet are pretty safe. If you watch TV, if you go on any of the apps that offer TV, they provide your security. Trust me, they don't want you to be hacked. If you work a lot on the Internet, the company you work for, they provide the security. They don't want the company to be hacked. So before we discuss who's going to hack you or not, you're going to find out when. We need to find out when are you at risk to be hacked, what are you doing to get hacked, and at what time, in what condition exactly, are these people going to come in and steal your privacy. The funny thing is that hacking is like fishing. They don't need to plan anything. They just go out there and fish. When are you going to get hacked? You're going to get hacked mainly through your email. That's the first spot that you're going to get hacked. The second place you might get hacked is when you go into the adult webs. Now, not the real ones, not the ones that work and sell pornographic materials. Those are the ones that are put out there fake so that you go in, give them their information, Trust them, and then they're going to hack you. Again, I repeat, not the real sites for adult content, but the ones that are fake. So now you know, and let's make it clear, you're going to get hacked when you're having fun, relaxing, or playing around. It's not going to happen mostly in your daily activities. It's not going to happen mostly in your work activities. It's going to happen when you have your guard down, you're relaxing, enjoying something you like, and there's where they get you. They might go out there to fish for your banking information. They might go out there to fish just to get into your files and your computer. Or they must just be out there fishing to see what they can get. So those are the three types of hacking or phishing, as I call it. The first thing you must know is that most everything on the Internet is fake. Believe it or not, 90%, maybe 80% of the information you get is not reliable. I'm not going to say fake. I'm going to correct that. I'm going to say not reliable. Most social media sites have an immense amount of fake profiles. How do you know if it's a real profile? 
You've never heard the voice of the guy or the girl. You've never seen a picture of him. You've never seen anything. You don't know him. You believe what you see on your screen. That's your number one mistake. Believe it or not, there's a huge battle by the social media company to do away with the fake profiles. They're dangerous. They might extort money out of you. They might extort information out of you. So rule number one, don't trust a profile because he's got a beautiful face, a nice picture, or because he came out of a prestigious university or college. Does he or she on that profile have many other photos on the internet? Do you see videos of them into the family enjoying? Do you see other activities related to that profile? All you have to do to find out if the picture in that profile is real is grab that picture, slide it into Google, and every other picture in there, the same picture or probably close to it, will appear and tell you if it's mostly what happens, a marketing picture, models that get paid to give out a picture for anything on the internet, any marketing promotion or anything. Uh, that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is research a little bit. Go see if he's got any other social media accounts or she. Go check YouTube if she's got any videos or he. Check around. Most real profiles, you will find lots of information related to that person confirming that that is the real person in the picture or in the photograph. Don't trust them because they're on LinkedIn. Don't trust them because they're on Facebook or Instagram. Trust me, they have a big problem with fake accounts, and you have to understand that. Probably 30 or 40 percent, maybe, I don't know, I may be wrong on the statistic, but at least 30 percent of the people who contact you will be fake accounts. So the first thing you need to do is don't trust because you just saw it on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. Just don't trust what you see. That is the principle number one. Investigate. Become knowledgeable about the person you're going to talk to or give any information to. The second thing that I've made it a personal rule, don't click on any one of your emails. Any attachment on your email that needs to be opened with a click, do not do it. Write back to that person and say, send me an open file or paste it on text on this email. Do not click on anything that comes in your email. Sorry for the ones who are sending the right materials, but it's just too many fake ones out there. So I would, as a personal rule, I don't click on anything on my email. I just don't do it. Once you click on that, there might be a virus, a Trojan. I, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. They have something that will sit in your hard disk and it'll last there forever. Email could be fun. It could be pretty productive when you work through email. Just have to be careful. Again, rule number one. Do not trust it because they say, click on this file. We have a business proposal for you or click on this file. You've been selected for a job, which is used pretty much now that 50 million Americans were unemployed. Do not do it. Again, the normal methods of contacting somebody through an email would be a simple text message or written message or type message, whatever you want to call it. And all the information you need to know is right there. They might direct you into a website. They might give you information to go elsewhere. Unless you have researched that person or you know him, do not do it. That is the way most people get hacked. They are careless. They trust everything on the internet. And they click on that little thing that looks blue or beautiful. Do not do it. And the last one is be pretty careful which website you go into. You have to be pretty knowledgeable about the internet. There's dozens of websites that if you put the web name in that other website, they'll tell you if it's a scam. There's dozens of places you can go and check if that domain is being used for scamming. Again, you need to do some research. You got to become a little knowledgeable on what you're doing on the internet. Remember, it's an open place. Anybody can go in and do whatever they want, say whatever they want, show themselves however they want, they can appear to be kings and queens, but they're actually frogs and crickets. Now, I can sit here for 10 hours and give you all the information about how risky this is, what time they're going to hack you, who is going to hack you. I can do that and spend a lot of time. But I go farther than that. You see, it doesn't matter how risky the Internet is. There's one principle that makes it pretty simple. If you're invisible, they can hurt you.